Hello YouTube and BCA fam. As you may know, Ethereum has been leading the altcoin rally for the past, as you can see here on the weekly charts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and currently the 7th week on the weekly charts. And this rally is based on the narrative that Ethereum will be having its merge event somewhere on the 15th of September. The golden question now here is, at this point, will the rally continue on? And if it does, where will it go up to? Could it be that there is this buy the rumor and sell the news? Or will the rally actually be stopping at this point? So let's do some basic Ethereum TA on the weekly and daily charts. Okay, first and foremost, looking at the price increase for Ethereum, it has almost doubled from where the bottom here, it has almost doubled for the past 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 weeks. Okay, going from the bottom of 909, around 975, I believe. Uh, all the way up to the current price of one, the high of one thousand, close to two thousand dollars. Okay, I believe it exceeded that two thousand uh, just yesterday alone. So we are looking at a double in value as far as performance concern. Whereas you compare this to Bitcoin, Bitcoin has has only rallied, you know, from for the past six seven weeks somewhere about we are looking at the peak of about 34 percent okay so clearly ethereum is outperforming bitcoin for the past several weeks and this is based on the uh, narrative that ethereum will be having its merge event somewhere in september 15 but looking on the weekly charts you can see now that Bitcoin, sorry, Ethereum is yet to break through its cycle band. So this cycle band, the blue and the red graph here, consists of the 20 week moving average and the 21 week moving average. Okay, so it's yet to break it. In fact, it has reacted with it this current week and it did come down a little bit uh, we are yet to see whether this week will be a green candle uh, if it does then hopefully it does break the this uh, cycle band here if it does break it it probably needs to come down to test it and then go further north okay but currently it has not broken the cycle band and if it does not uh, break it by this week um, then there is evidence that the rally may be weakening the bulls may be weakening and we will have to see if at all this rally continues but nevertheless um, Ethereum needs to break the bulls need to break this cycle band for Ethereum in order for the rally to continue into the merge event. The next resistance besides the cycle band would be this decline resistance that we connect from the from the peak for Ethereum to this high here. And this is a significant resistance because this is similar to the decline resistance that we have for Bitcoin. Looking at the Bitcoin charts, it's actually this, okay, connecting from the bull cycle peak back in November of last year to the peak here we see, regional peak that we see here in March. Uh, so this resistance is, this is actually pretty important for Bitcoin because by the time you break it, then it may indicate that Bitcoin actually has broken has ended its consolidation phase uh, 
but for Ethereum to go all the way up to this resistance uh, line will be significant and even to break it will also be significant but nevertheless we'll have to see if at all Ethereum will actually reach up to that that's for the weekly charts now moving on with the daily charts on the daily charts for Ethereum the first indicator I would want to share is that I will look out for the RSI indicator uh, here you can see the RSI value is sort of like playing along this support as the price of Ethereum goes up it needs to stay above this support because if at all this RSI was to break below this support then there is good chance that the price will break down as well as you can see in the past uh, I drew this support here so the RSI was actually playing along and every time it breaks below the support price will go further down here's another instance here is a support that the RSI was building on but once it breaks below that you can see that the price will go further down after that so for the bulls it's important that the RSI stays above this support and let's see where this actually could uh, how long it would stay above this uh, support the next resistance that I will look out for would be the 200 day moving average it is this purple graph that you can see here why it's important because in this current bear cycle it has at least once actually it's this point here that it has proved to be very strong resistance here you can see in this surge up it met the price of ethereum has met the 200 day moving average it acted as strong resistance and it failed to break above it so it came further down we would have to see how the current price of ethereum would react upon touching this 200 day moving average if this resistance proves to be strong then it might break down now if the price of ethereum breaks above it and goes further up well that's uh, a bullish scenario but it comes down and tests it as support converts the resistance to support then and goes back up after that then it will be very bullish for ethereum by looking at the dates for the ethereum merge as you can see here on ethereum.org uh, right on top explains a bit about the merge and the merge the purpose of the merge is basically to allow the beacon chain proof of stake uh, consensus to go merge on the mainnet so there will be many benefits of that it's one of the scaling upgrades which includes a sharding and the energy as you all may know the energy consumption for proof of work it's a lot higher so this merge will hence reduce the energy consumption the date of the merge here currently is mentioned as the 19th but the last i heard from some influencers that is actually brought forward to the 15th so we'll continue on with the updates of, of this okay personally don't quote me on it i would think that uh, there may be a buy the rumor sell the news where as long as price increase continues on as we draw closer to the event date either before the event date or after the event date the price may start weakening so those that are actually trading on a short-term basis you may want to look out for the all the indicators that i mentioned and see where the price of ethereum will be going from from there
So that's all I have to share on the short-term TA for Ethereum. Let's move on with a sharing by Vitalik Buterin. In this short video, he will be emphasizing on the different components of the merge event and what are the different challenges for Ethereum moving on. If you compare the uh, process of getting the beacon chain out the door to the process of getting ETH 1.0 out the door, mm -hmm. like the ETH 1.0 took uh, 20 months, right? Yeah. From uh, like myself writing the first version of the white paper to a launch. Uh, but here, like we're looking at a merge that will take like maybe about 22 months or 21 months um, after the yeah, original launch of the beacon chain. Um, and of course, the original launch of the beacon chain itself happened after a development process. Sharding still taking a while. Um, you know, things like account abstraction are taking a while. EIP, but on the other hand, like EIP 1559, that's uh, something that was like a huge economic reform. And it's uh, one that's had like actually pretty very significant consequences, right? Mm -hmm. That's uh, been great for fee stability. It's been great for fast inclusion. It's been great for lots of things. Um, but, you know, that took like three years to get through, but, you know, now it's finally there, right? So I think uh, there's kind of these two opposing pressures that uh, we as a community have to deal with, where one is kind of this uh, pressure that speeds things up because there's more awesome researchers, there's more awesome uh, developers, there's like a lot more effort going into all of these problems. Uh, but then there's also the pressure slowing us down, which is like... Mm -hmm the uh, desire to um, you know not break things uh, the desire to uh, kind of implement stuff across multiple clients to make sure we have all of these uh, test suites uh, and uh, also the desire to kind of simultaneously build all of the surrounding infrastructure right like uh, when ethereum launched it did not have like this massive ecosystem of block explorers and right. like you know, side infrastructure that the beacon chain has already mm -hmm. uh, so i think like both of those uh, uh, pressures exist and like to some extent, that's um, healthy, and uh, like to some extent, this uh, actually gets into stuff that I'm going to talk about in this presentation, which is that I think it's like healthy for Ethereum to have a bit of a move fast and break things attitude, like specifically over the next couple of years, because like you know we do need to radically change stuff, right? Like switching the consensus algorithm, moving over to sharding, uh, moving over to like a very different model for how transactions get included. But at the same time, there's kind of this longer term desire where you know we do want L1 to kind of settle down into something that's like very stable and dependent and uh, it's not something that kind of wins by outmaneuvering the alternatives, it's something that wins by outlasting the alternatives. I guess uh, we're both, uh, you know, d doing all of the good work that needs to be done to kind of get through all of these kind of big stages at the beginning and uh, at the same time, like there's also this question of like, you know, how do we properly set ourselves up for and this uh, longer term future where the uh, layer one starts to become this uh, a bit of a more static thing. Um, and, you know, the improvements are more incremental, they're more kind of, uh, you know, technical and safety oriented. Once that happens, then, um, you know, Ethereum will just get slower and that's fine, right? But then, you know, layer two work is only going to get faster, I think. Like we've seen already, there's like five ZK VMs now. And uh, <laughs> like basically, you know, there's so many uh, ZK uh, EVMs that um, we uh, they're starting to care like almost uh, as much about debating which one of them is a real ZK EVM as they do about actually building the product, mm -hmm. which is uh, in some ways actually a great place for an ecosystem to be. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so, so you know, thinking that you know th things are going well, um, and um, I think uh, you know the. And if the recognition that stuff like the merge does actually actually need to happen on a timetable, like I think that's also something that's uh, picking up the yeah, recognition that um, you know things like scaling are something that needs to kind of happen on a timetable, right? As uh, I think I've sometimes like like said before, like uh, you know you can lose a, a billion dollars from a hack, but you can also lose a billion dollars from everybody just needing to pay way higher fees than they have to, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Less one one is more flashy and uh, glamorous, but um, you know the other is uh, also actually yeah a really a, a really serious kind of drain and uh, tax on the ecosystem. We hope that you have enjoyed this insightful video report. Please give it a like and do share it with your friends. To explore further on profitable Bitcoin analysis, please check out our live Bitcoin seminars and webinar events. The link access to the event platforms are listed in the description of this video below.